So right here I'm going to drop the X12 scrap maker for this null ray over here because we're going to have to use it to take out some repair sentries that are located around this area. And this is going to be a rather large encounter with a bunch of uh, Autobot soldiers. Some of them have overshields, like this uh, scout over here. And then uh, there's also going to be a destroyer right in the middle of it all. So if these guys come along the side, you definitely want to take a break and take them out. But uh, first priority should be to take out all the repair sentries. And they're kind of uh, located in weird places, so you might not be able to see them right away until they actually start healing one of your enemies. And you can see the beam quite obviously. A few of them are over here and they only really pop up every once in a while. But after we've done that, then we can focus on the other enemies. You don't have to go for the destroyer right away, but I got a good opportunity here. There's a uh, turret over here that got knocked off its mounting already, so... I'll just go ahead and pick that up. Wait for him to turn his back to us. So we can knock off his armor plating again. And hit the glowing part on his back. Just like the last time we fought this guy. With that turret, he went down pretty quickly. But then we're just going to have to take this turret and see what else we can get out of it, since we still have like more than half the ammo left for it. You definitely want to uh, approach this area from the side like I am instead of going down in there because you'll probably be uh, pinned down by those snipers pretty quickly. Slowly working my way over here to these guys. This is where the snipers are. That's about all there is to that. It should be the last of those enemies. I'm going to hold on to the Null Ray for a while now. I'm not going to go back and get the X-12 Scribe Maker. I guess we have to kill every last enemy for the door to open, which can take some, some time. Over there is a uh, apparently a nuclear shock cannon, which I didn't realize why it was there. But uh, we're not going to need that. A couple soldiers come out of this door over here. We're going to have to drive pretty fast through this part to get away from uh, Omega Supreme. Right here, this is a little scripted event right here where you automatically transform and fall over for no reason. So we managed to dodge Omega Supreme and now we're in back inside hiding from him yet again. More ammo for the Null right there. Now here we have some more snipers, and uh, with, our, with the two weapons that we have right now, they should not be a problem at all, especially because we have the no ray. So we can just go ahead and snipe them right back. Hello, phone. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, there's a couple guys out here, as well as a couple of uh, repair sentries that might be behind them. I mean, not that the repair sentries will actually be all that much of a threat, because you can one-shot these guys with a nice, clean headshot. 
and he won't have any time to be repaired. And there's a random guy with an overshield down here. So that should be about all the snipers. As I've said before, encounters with snipers in this game are really pretty easy. I think they could have made them much harder. So as we go in here, we're going to have these uh, Energon power conduits in here. Well, that might be over on the over on this side of the bridge, actually. <laughs> this little sentry here, I wanted to uh, try to ram it with the uh, vehicle mode of sound wave here, but that didn't really work that well. <laughs> it was worth a shot, though. It died nonetheless. Okay, in here, this is where we have the Energon power conduits. Remind you of a certain part in Act 3 of Vanquish. Finally, it's something they can kill a brute with one shot. I thought that didn't exist in this game. But whatever, we basically have to... Same thing as like in Vanquish, you have to get through here before the uh, beam returns and before it kills you with one shot, of course. And it's actually a little harder than it looks, but coming out here, we don't really have a lot of room to hide from these aerial bots. But uh, we, ha we have powerful enough weapons to deal with them. The Norway will get rid of them in one shot, regardless of where you hit them, as long as they're in their vehicle mode. I'm having a hard time hitting them with the uh, Photon Burst Rifle for some reason. There we go. Should have used that the whole time. We need to go back over here. There's a uh, thermo rocket launcher right there, I noticed, which would be nice in this area. In fact, I probably should have picked it up on against and used it against those aerial bots while I had the chance. But uh, I'm happy with the weapons I have right now. More death traps, I mean power conduits. This one we gotta be really quick about because the, the exit's right there. But it doesn't waste any time. And here is another energy on repair ray. Not that we're gonna use that. Pretty much the two weapons that I never use are in this room. They, uh, that plasma cannon might be random though, I'm not sure. And here we're going to have to fight some more cloakers! Oh joy! Now the, uh, the weapons that I have right now are really not that good against cloakers because they're precision weapons and it's kind of hard to be precise on an enemy you can't see. But uh, the rockets on Sandway's vehicle mode are pretty good against them because of the splash damage. Now, had I picked up the thermal rocket launcher earlier, it would have also been good, as I believe I demonstrated earlier in the game. Well, I did manage to take out one of them with the photon burst rifle. What do you know? The nice thing about uh, the the rockets in the uh, leader class vehicle mode is that. Uh, it uses them, it's, it shoots two at a time, which can be uh, good for dealing a lot of damage, but it also means it runs out really quickly. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And stock up on ammo before heading into this room. Because there'll be quite a few guys in here, some of which will have overshields, and there'll even be a brute in there, so we definitely want to be prepared. Feel free to use your grenades and all the other stuff in here. Now, right here, I used uh, Soundwave's deployable sentry turret, which uh, is another one of his nice abilities, his nice defensive abilities, but it didn't last very long. It only has a certain amount of health, and it got blown away pretty quickly. Now, in the multiplayer, there's several different stages of uh, deployable sentry turret that you can uh, unlock. Some of them, uh, 
can be cloaked and some others can be in, can you shoot rockets instead. But in the campaign we just have to make do with this standard one. Which can be, still can be useful sometimes, especially in these defensive situations like this. But uh, I never really uh, got to use it all that well because it just got blown away. But the, uh, the medic character, as I'm calling them, typically has the sentry, like I believe uh, in the Autobot campaign, uh, who is it, uh, Ratchet has it as well. I'm not sure who has it amongst the three Seekers though. Mainly because I usually play a Starscream. But uh, I still have some of those remote mines, they're going to be pretty good against these brutes as usual. Picked up some frags out here. Alright, that should be enough to finish them off. Now, despite my recommendation of picking up the uh, turrets every time you fight a brute, or every time you come across a turret, we're not really going to be able to do that right here because we're going to go over here to this switch and activate this uh, bridge and uh, for it's going to be a vehicle sequence so uh, we're not going to be able to carry those turrets. There might be some other good stuff over here you could get but uh, I think I'm fine on ammo. Alright, so let's roll. We will have to dodge some of these mines again. Not to mention Omega Supreme now. Yeah, Soundwave's uh, RAM ability is pretty good for getting an extra boost of speed through here when you have a nice straight line. Right here, your uh, path will be broken, so you'll have to uh, go pretty fast to, to uh, bridge that gap, and I managed to just barely get across it. Oh, we managed to get through that without so much as a scratch. I don't know why I still keep getting the missile inbound warning. I think it's from uh, Omega Supreme's weapon. Right here is an overshield. Definitely want to pick that up as usual. Yeah, that missile inbound warning is getting a little annoying. But anyway, we're going to head in here. There's another X-12 scrap maker over here if you want to use it again. And we got more cloakers, oh joy. The X-12 scrap maker probably would have been nice to pick up against these guys actually since I still have the Nori and all that, but oh well. Again, just sort of spam them with the rockets. That seems to be the way to go with, with any and every vehicle mode in this game when fighting cloakers just to use the vehicle weapons. Lost almost all my overshield already. Yeah, we're not as maneuverable in our vehicle mode, so you definitely want to watch yourself because I've already got half my health taken out by one guy. Alright, that elevator should be on its way down. 